morning, good morning, everyone. All right, so uh, you know we're here to talk about how to localize a global game. And uh, I'm very happy to be here in Hong Kong. And I'm joined on stage uh, by three CEOs who've been there, done that in this field of uh, developing games and uh, marketing them uh, to regional markets and uh, across the globe. So, uh, you know, the idea is always to develop and uh, sell games that are exciting, continually compelling, and memorable for players around the world, right? So, um, the idea of localization uh, really talks about how you can customize a game uh, for a regional market. Uh, you know, and it could be as basic as just the uh, changing the text or, or the UI into certain languages to suit your local players, or it could be uh, changing up the art style, changing up uh, the way levels look, uh, customizing it for certain regional events, and so on. Right. So I'm joined by Arthur Chow, who's the co-founder and CEO of Six Waves, a leading global publisher of mobile and Facebook social games. He is also the winner of EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2012 and was featured recently by HSBC Commercial Banking ad, uh, bag Banking's ad campaign as a leading business person. I'm also uh, here with Yatsu, who's a serial technology entrepreneur based in Hong Kong. And he's the founder and CEO of Outlays, uh, which is a conglomerate specializing in gaming, cloud technology, and smartphone and tablet software. Uh, Yat has also founded Animoca and Animoca Brands which are two major game developers and publishers. And finally, I'm here with uh, Misha Lalin, who is the CEO of Zepto Lab, one of the top mobile uh, developers in the world. Uh, and they're best known for uh, the very, very cute game, Cut the Rope, uh, featuring the little green monster who's a fan of candy, called Om Nom. Right. So, um, you know, we are very, very short on time, so I'm just going to dive right in uh, into the session. Yeah. So. Uh, I'd love for you guys to just talk about uh, the basic points uh, involved in, uh, you know, or the thought process behind localizing a game, uh, starting from how you know that a title requires localization in certain markets, like how do you know which markets to get into, uh, and then how do you realize the cultural differences, uh, and you know, what are the actual changes that you uh, that you want to develop and build into the game, you know, and uh, if if you can just pepper in with some examples from titles that you guys have released. Do you want to go ahead, Misha? Uh, sure. Well, <coughs> uh, we, yes, we're best known for, for game, uh, cutthroat game series, right? And, and the series is very universal. It doesn't have that much language in it, right? Little monster seeds and it can be. However, uh, when you go to local markets, there are still very many differences uh, how people perceive content, right? And, and uh, the minute you put something in the game that, that feels local to people, just increases uh, your exposure basically in the market right so start from the language and right. then you think about what other things in the market that are local uh, billing system payments community management all of those little things you need to change essentially uh, for the game to work in the market as a local game right and uh, you know what do, wh how do you notice the uh, cultural differences in different countries uh, you know what what are the uh, you know where do you get inspiration for the ideas uh, you know that you know will really work and really uh, resonate with people in a local market. Uh, do you want to go ahead? Zach? I, I think there's a there's a, a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them being either you can work with uh, local brands. Yep. Right. So for instance, um, often celebrity endorsements or working right. with basically local brands yeah. that you know are popular. Uh, or for that matter, sometimes you can work like you know for instance, um, we work very closely with the makers of Doraemon, which is mm -hmm. a very popular Japanese animation brand. Yeah. It's also very popular in India. It's also very popular in certain parts of Europe. Uh, we can use that to target a segment. And the nice thing about that kind of localization is you don't have to localize that much mm -hmm. because they watch the original animation and they expect it to be that way. Yeah. Right? So it's more like a global niche rather than necessarily saying, let me enter a market. Yeah. More like, let me enter a target audience that is spread across the world but has affinity towards that brand. Right. Uh, but also, we're generally casual games makers, so we like to make sure that it doesn't have as much text because mm -hmm. the most, more text there is, the harder it is to localize. And uh, there's a higher propensity of mistakes. Right. right, so right. And Arthur, uh, can, can you share some ideas that, uh, that have inspired your games uh, you know, in terms of how you localize and what, what inspired you to go about it? Sure. So um, to answer your earlier question about you know, how do we think about which markets to pick, 
So we look at where the money is, right? Yeah. So we look at you know the, the you know the uh, revenue from different countries. So yeah. uh, we actually picked uh, Japan, uh, Taiwan, and Hong Kong being our major markets, right. uh, because these are actually if you look at the Google Play revenue, it's actually the top ten countries, and relatively less competitive. Like a lot of people talking about China, but to us, China is actually ultra competitive, and also the margins are relatively low. Right. Um, so we 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 actually decided strategically to pick these markets and. The way that we think about doing a good localization is to really rely on local people, right? So okay. we set up local offices in these countries to, yeah. to make sure that we're done in the right context. Yeah. And uh, the localization that we feel that has to be done in the sense that it's not just within the game. Mm -hmm. More importantly, it's really outside the game. How do you actually do live operations? Meaning, you know, you do events and promotions. Yeah. How do you do use local marketing channels? And how do you do actually good customer service? I mean, this is only done with a local team. So, so that's right. why, you know, we, we put a lot of thoughts and I think there's a lot of trial error over the last seven years since yeah. uh, we started the company. Uh, we actually initially, when we started the company seven years ago, uh, there was only four of us and we actually did use Google Translate. And <laughs> back then it was okay. And then we also used a bit of uh, crowdsourcing. Yeah. Uh, the users are actually very participative and willing to change some of our translation. But now the users are trained to expect a lot more. Yeah. So we cannot really do it that way. So we have to use local teams. Sure, sure. And um, I wanted to know, like, when you all are conceptualizing new titles, do you build in uh, opportunities for localization right from the get-go? Or is it more of an iterative process where uh, you've already built the game and then you're like, okay, maybe this would do really well if it was customized completely for so-and-so market? <coughs> Maybe I'll quickly start. Uh, yeah, for please. us, generally, especially in the casual segment, we have to be as broad as possible, right? Yeah. So it's diff we, um, when, we, when we launch a game, it's basically generally intended to be for a global audience. So that means the, the product has to be designed modularly enough that you can take things out, that you can basically have an event system, that you know, localization is generally string-based as yeah. opposed to hard-coded. You know, certain elements like that uh, need to be part of the design from the get-go. Because, uh, you know, when we first started off, we learned many painful lessons. So, oh, yeah, we want to make this change in, I don't know, Korea, or let's do this for, you know, Golden Week in Japan. And, oh, everything is hard-coded. Whoops, this is sort of, you know, graphic version of a display. So you have yeah. to do a lot more artwork. So these right. kind of optimizations you experience over time. Uh -huh. And if you, the longer you work on it, the more you know what you need to do, right? It's just an experience thing. Sure. And, um, you know, at the same time, I'd also want to know... Um, you know, how do you test your localized content with your audience? And, um, and the reason I ask is because sometimes I feel like games work well without much localization. I, I completely understand when you say you're, uh, you know, you're going to tie it in to go, uh, to with um, an event for marketing and so on. But otherwise, how do you know that, okay, maybe this game will work just fine? I think uh, Cut the Rope is a great example because it's so universally uh, developed. It's a monster. Monsters all over the world love candy. So, Yeah, but, but uh, you know... When you have a simple game, of course, it's very, very easy, right? And, and essentially, you might uh, have a game that has no text whatsoever and no yeah. events and nothing. But when you're talking about uh, free-to-play games, you know, massive games, yeah. um, it's not just localization, it's culturalization, right? Because, you know, people in this country, uh, you know, go home on Friday and they play, you know, the, this event, if it ends on, on, on Friday evening, it's yeah. a good, good thing, right? That, that's more important than, than necessarily having a language, right? So many people might play in English, for example, yeah. but still, you know, they want to compete with their friends, and if their friends, you know, don't want to wake up in the middle of the night, you're not going to be able to have any friends, right, in the game. So that's what you have to work, look for, and, and community is important. We talk to um, our most active players, we just ask them, we're like, so what do you like, what you don't like? Right. And sometimes they point out and say, well, this is a bit iffy, and uh -huh. here and there, right? But yeah. Right, it's no longer really crowdsourcing. It's now has to be done very professionally. Right. And if you do a game, people expect it to be, you know, top notch. Yeah. Otherwise, they're not going to play it. <laughs> sure. And do you, would you like to add to that, yeah, Arthur? So um, we obviously also listen to the community. Yeah. So, uh, for example, one of the games that we publish in Hong Kong is called Age of Free Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. It's done really well. Uh, it's always on the top grossing chart. Um, so when we actually brought it to Japan, we actually spent another six months to localize it before we launched it. Right. But even still, you know, after we launched it, uh, we got feedback from, you know, uh, we used Twitter and also Facebook uh, to collect the feedback from uh, the users in Japan. We still have to localize it further and, and change some of the characters and the design uh, of, uh, you know, certain, uh, you know, trading cards. So yeah. uh, we always have to kind of like maintain that conversation with our users because uh, you actually get a lot of feedback and pretty quick. And, and especially Japanese users, they have 
really high standards. If they don't like something, they tell you right yeah. away. So yeah. you have to be very uh, interactive with them. Right on, right on. <coughs> there is one thing, though, I would also caution, which uh, we've experienced is there's, there are cases of over-localization, mm -hmm. right? So it's okay to localize. You definitely have to. Yeah. But sometimes it's really important that whoever the creative team is, that the vision of that original product remains. Right. Because especially when we work with publishers, and whether it's in China or India for that matter, there's an idea of, well, it has to fo follow this way, and then it yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Right. And it's because uh, there were assumptions made without understanding the soul of the game right, or the, right. the creative behind it, yes. and then it too much was done. Now we've had cases where they changed the artwork entirely in a certain style, uh -huh. but it didn't fit with the spirit of the game, and it actually it, it killed it, as opposed to making it better. Right, so I think that's, some, that's, that's a fine balance, and it's never perfect, obviously. Yeah, right? I totally agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and so now, I mean, uh, so you guys have been in this business for a while, you all have done the localization uh, you know, rounds for your various titles. So uh, going forward, uh, you know, is, is that something you always, uh, you know, you all build into uh, games going forward? A and how do you, how do you actually uh, plan for it uh, with your next titles, your upcoming titles? Well, we have to, uh, for us, for Western companies, right, I mean, we know that 84% of growth uh, in video games industry in general is going to come from here. Yeah. So <coughs> uh, every market in Asia is a bit different. Uh, from 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 each other, right? While in Europe and the United States, it's kind of the same. Yeah. So for us, when we build the products, we think about what what's going to make the game work in the local markets, right? Right. But the most importantly, we think whether or not the game is suitable for the local market. Right. I mean, also the way I'm, uh, the, what I wanted to know is when someone comes in with an idea, uh, you know, for the game, are you guys already like, hold on, the you know, we need to tweak that idea so that it works across markets, or, no. or do you first want to build a good core DNA? Game, and game and then is a game. Ahead. It has to be fun to play, regardless, right? right? I mean, uh, what market, where it's, where it's happening? Sure. There has to be a core game, and only then you start localizing. I see. Don't don't start before. <laughs> right. Right. On. And um, you know, I'd love to know uh, more about whether there've uh, there've been any any in innovations or any localization techniques. Uh, that you guys have used in some markets and then found that, wow, this could actually work better or uh, you know, similar things could work in, uh, you know, in your international version. Any, any learnings from local markets that you've taken elsewhere? Yeah, so uh, as I said earlier, I think um, originally a lot of people focused on just the in-game localization and culturalization. Yeah. But I think more and more importantly, it's really outside the game. Uh, right. So for example, you know, we, the game that we published re recently, uh, it's actually done by um, a Chinese developer, mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually acting as a publisher. So we have the yeah. Hong Kong rights, and the Taiwan rights were actually given to another publisher. Right. So basically, it's the same game. So. Uh, so the only difference is how you actually do the marketing, how you do use the acquisition and the live ops, right? Yeah. And uh, our game actually end up in the top five, you know, always on the top five grossing chart. And the other game in Taiwan is like in the hundreds. So ah. I think that's why we, we put a lot more effort in right. making the community active and listening to them and actually fine tuning the events. So yeah. I think more and more emphasis that actually will be put in actually uh, the localization and culturalization outside of the game. So that's the way we go forward. Well, that's interesting. I think messaging and marketing is very yeah. important. Uh, so especially if, you, if you're coming from the outside and you're not in the market, you have to find a publisher. Yeah. Uh, then you're finding the right publisher who understands how to address that market segment. The other thing about finding the right publisher is also finding the publisher that understands your game segment. Yeah. That actually we find sometimes is a struggle right. because many publishers like to focus on a certain area, whether it's mid-core, whether it's casual, whatever. Finding that right publisher in that right market will help you uh, and you know, if you're anyway looking at a, for, for like a simple hack, like a very simple global hack, if you will, uh, is you could just simply look at at least um, uh, localizing your screenshots mm. per country. Right? right? It's not expensive. Yeah, maybe you don't want to target Tunisia. Maybe you don't want to target you know Brazil. Yeah. But just change the screenshots with the local languages. Put in the elements uh, that that make sense, and it does give a lift in organic installation. I see. Yeah. That's very interesting. And um, you know, I'd love to know more about um, how you plan to um, expand beyond the mobile screen, uh, you know, and bring the franchises out, uh, whether it's into video and movies, uh, you know, merchandise and so on. Uh, you know, what are some cues you look for, and how do you know what to do right, and you know, what to really spend a lot of effort and time on, uh, you know, when you're extending the franchise? <coughs> well, we have a movie coming out, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. And but 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 I think the. We haven't planned for it, really. And, and I think uh, when, we, when we talk about new games that we're, we're developing, 
we don't even think about it either because I think it's just it, we're in a different industry. We're in an industry of games. Yeah. So if we're in the industry of movies, then we would think about how to make a movie, right? Now okay. we think about games, and then if people like them, then you can actually expand on it. it you know, not a, not a complicated question, not a complicated answer, but I mean, it's as simple as that for us. Sure, sure. So I think the way we think about this is that we're, we're a gaming company at heart. Right. So we really want to focus on gaming. So yeah. if there's a choice, we want to see our games on the top grossing chart. Yeah. Now, if for some reasons that is not on the top grossing chart, but it's always on the top downloaded chart, right. that means that a lot of people actually know your IP. Yeah. Then we'll think about maybe branching off to other different products. But the way we probably would do it is actually to work with partners, right? We don't want to manufacture, you know, Kind of like you know bags and stuff, but but yeah. you know to really license uh, uh, with work, work with partners. Right on, right on. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. And uh, you know, since we've just got a minute left on the timer, uh, I'd love to know, uh, you know, what are your uh, what are you working on next, and what's your current favorite game? What what's on your mobile device right now? Um, what's um, we're focusing on Korea, so uh, yeah. you know we're actually setting up a team in Korea because I think uh, again Korea is actually one of the top ten countries in the world in terms right. of gaming revenue. Uh, and then next, we'll be looking into uh, Southeast Asia and also uh, South Asia. I think that's okay. uh, the next thing. I think there's more smartphone penetration. People are more willing to pay for games. So yep. uh, that's what we're planning for, for the next steps. Right on. For us, typically, uh, we always work with brands. Right? Yeah. That's sort of our global market strategy. Uh, we recently announced a deal with Mattel. Yeah. So we'll be doing uh, basically games and apps with pretty much all the Mattel IP like Hot Wheels, um, oh. Thomas the Train, those guys. I and look we'll be making to lots that. of games for that. So fantastic. Yes. Well, for uh, for us, you know, obviously, you know, we go Cutthroat brand and and on Nom we have Cutthroat Three will be coming out some point soon. A movie, you know, a bunch of other interesting things. Yeah. But we also uh, we made a company that makes original games, right? Yeah. So, uh, King of Thieves is a game that's been released about six months ago. Yeah. Right now we are growing everywhere, yeah. and and I'm spending a lot of time in Asia because. In every Asian uh, market, we have a lot of work to do, right? right, on, right and on. we obviously have more games coming out that will follow a similar pattern. Lovely. All right. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you so much for listening. Cheers. Have a great day.